Okay, welcome to my iPad painting tutorials. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna do a silhouetted tree and some nice silhouetted grass in the foreground, as well as a sunset in the background. I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to do each part of this landscape. And if you want to follow along exactly using the same brushes and the same colors, well, the brushes I'm going to be using are the syrup brush within Ink Ink, and that's gonna be used for the grass in the foreground. I'm going to be using the soft brush within airbrushing for most of the sky, maybe a medium brush for parts of the tree. And then within the artistic brushes, I'm gonna go for the leatherwood. I'm going to slightly amend the leatherwood brush by tapping on it, go to the grain, and I'm just gonna turn the scale of the grain down to none. Gets rid of some of the texture, makes it a better kind of brush for tree foliage. Click done. And the colors, I have some pre-selected colors here. If you look down in the video description, there is a link to my Patreon and you can download the color file for free. Also in the description to this video, there are the hexadecimal codes, and all you need to do is go to the value section within the colors, type each one of them in here, press enter, the color will appear up here, and you can just tap it into your own color palette and construct it yourself. So this is just an A4 canvas, it's the default settings. So if you've got everything else set up, then you're good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do on my first layer, I'm going to go to my colors, I'm going to select this first color here, now it's going to have the effect of a, a blue color in the sky simply by the fact it's contrasted with some warm colors, but it isn't actually a blue color. If you go to the colors, you'll see it's very much a grayed out version of a yellow orange color, but it doesn't matter because once you put a gray next to warm colors, it tends to look blue. But we're just gonna flood that layer and then we're gonna move on to another layer. On this layer, we're gonna select the airbrushing soft brush. We're going to put it up to about 10% and around 50% opacity. Go back to our colors, choose the second color along. And on this second layer, I'm just going to do a line all the way across. Maybe double it up, maybe even do a third one. Then I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer and slide it across. So around 40% will do. We'll create another layer. Go back to our colors, go to our third color this time. Keep the brush on the soft brush, 10% size and 50% opacity. And we'll just aim for slightly below the area that we've just created. So the bottom half of it, like so, twice over it, three times, four times, five times should do. Back to our adjustments, back to the Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer, and we'll just soften that in as well. And we'll put that slightly less far at around 30%. We'll create another layer. Go back to our colors. We'll go to the fourth color along this time. And same brush settings as before. We're just going to go to the bottom section and we're going to do that a few times across as well. Layering up quite a few times. Go back to our adjustments. Gaussian blur layer. And then we'll blend it in quite a long way this time. So about 45%. During the painting, all you need to do is you want to impact the layer or dramatically if you want to make it more powerful, you can just go to the layer and duplicate it now. And you can see that second layer has become much warmer and much more powerful. So I'm just going to pinch them together and you'll see the effect of that. And I'm probably going to do the same for the next layer. Duplicate it, increase the impact, merge those two layer threes together, and I'm going to duplicate the last layer again and merge those two colors together. Sometimes when you're starting on with these basic colors, it feels a little bit like it's going too far, but then you can actually experiment by doubling them up and actually it has a really nice effect. We're going to create another layer. And on this new layer, we're gonna go back to our colors, but this time we're gonna start on the second row. We'll come back to using these colors a little later, but to begin with, we'll go to this first color on this second row. And using the same brush, soft brush, we're gonna turn the size of that brush so a lot lower, it's about 4%. Keep it on, in fact, we'll change the opacity. We'll put it up to 100% and you see it's a lot darker now. But this is good. It's gonna create a contrast between land elements now and the sky. So we're just gonna to go to about quarter of the way up and I'm going to start creating some bumps, some slightly distant foliage of trees that are sticking up in certain areas. And I don't need to worry too much. I'm just gonna create a sense that there are some features there. We can just Keep coloring that. And if you want to just flood fill it, you can just drag from that color 
until it drops and you'll see there is a slightly white line but to get rid of that you just slide it across to the right and it will find the right point as long as you haven't let go of the apple pencil you'll be able to do just about that now let's fix that top edge so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to our brushes we're going to go to our artistic brush the leatherwood brush that we have amended check the size of this now so we're going to turn it slightly lower to about three percent let's check that that looks a bit better we're going to turn the opacity of that slightly down to around 70 percent and we're just going to go back into this layer and just amend slightly that top edge just to give it a slightly rougher finish just to break up the, the top edge if you zoom in you'll notice it creates some more textures here that's not really a problem we can sort that out a little later but we're just after that broken texture on the top you can tap it a few times just to create some little sections of the foliage that perhaps just break away we want to do that all the way across if you want to reduce the size of the brush to more like two percent you can just really get in there and create some extra refined little details be a bit more precise and you can layer up some of that texture a little bit too something like that. Now I'm just going to go back to that layer and duplicate it again. Just really make some of it stronger, sharpens up some of the edge. We can always soft focus it a little bit in a moment, which I'll show you how to do that. So we're just going to merge those two layers together again. So pinch them like that. And we'll do this now. We'll go to the adjustments for that layer. We'll go to the Gaussian blur again, affect the whole layer, and we'll just slide it in slightly just to soften it. You don't want to lose that texture by going too far but it looks a little bit too sharp for something that's supposed to be in the distance too. So we'll just take it to around the 3%. Just knocks it back a little bit while still retaining most of that actual texture. We're going to create another layer. And on this layer, we're going to create a tree. So we're going to go back to our brushes. We'll go to the airbrushing medium brush. We're going to have to turn it down to around 2% size, but we'll put it up to 100% opacity. Go back to our colors. We've used the first green, we're going to go for the second green along and you'll see that it stands out a little bit more, it's a little bit darker. If we find that these colours are a little bit too saturated, too vibrant, we can always go to the adjustments and just subdue them where necessary, if necessary. So what I'm going to do now, and this is perhaps the area of this tutorial that's going to need a little bit of practice. So if you have any images of trees that you want to use as a reference, then this is a good time to dig those out, to look for one, See if you can get the shapes that you can copy from. Otherwise, you can follow along and do something similar to mine. I'm going to have a tree trunk. I'm not worried about the bottom bit. And it's going to have branches that splinter off. So I'm going to reduce the size of the brush when it gets higher up. So I'll turn it down to the lower end of 2%. And then as it gets further into the sky, maybe even reduce it further to the 1%. I'll do one main branch to begin with, like that. And then I'll repeat the process for another main branch. So I'll put it back up to 2% create a branch. Maybe this one reaches a point where it, it splits off more. Reduce the size of the brush again. Whenever it gets close to the top, we want that to really be turning into finer branches. And then as we go further up, still with the small size brush at the 1%, I can then break it off, have it branched off into smaller branches. I'm reducing the pressure just so it fades off a little bit at the edge too. And then I can do something similar. You might even want to turn the opacity down for some of these end branches just to stop you overdoing it and maybe even turn the brush size down further for the very ends. We're going to create some foliage to go over large parts of this anyway. I'm going to create some of the main branches again. So back up to 2% and back up on the opacity and I'm going to create some more of these branches. It's really important to make sure that your branches get thinner as they go up so you need to keep adjusting that brush size so don't use the same brush all the way to the top you need to keep reducing the size the further you go up and then also we'll have some smaller branches that perhaps grow from near the bottom as well again turn the opacity down when you get towards the finer branches otherwise they're just going to look too powerful you don't have to use the the bigger brush for the thicker branches either you can just start to build them up even with a smaller brush you can perhaps do them section by section rather than doing it as one brush mark you can just keep going over it make sure you're getting the right kind of shapes the right kind of thickness that you actually want take your time on this 
I think if you get this tree silhouette looking really nice, then the rest of the image will really benefit from it. Like I said, that is not the only feature, so the other elements will help it along as well. So even if you struggle with this tree, have a look at the other elements, and no matter how your tree comes out, stick with the other elements because it might just start to gel it together. It might just make it work even though you're not entirely happy with the tree itself. So an image is not just one of its elements, it's a combination of all the different things within the scene and they all add up to make the overall effect. This is just one of the elements. So don't get too hung up on this if this ends up being tricky, but do your best. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our artistic brushes We'll go back to the Leatherwood brush. We'll just check the size of that. We'll put it at the 2% and we're going to start building up some of the textures for the tree, especially when we get towards the top part when we have lots of the fine branches. And we can just start to build up some of this texture. Do it in clumps. You need to leave some gaps. You don't want it to be entirely filled in. You must be able to see the light through it to create the right effect. Try to avoid doing this, that's not really going to help. It doesn't look too natural. So I'm doing more gestures left to right. I can vary it a little bit. because We don't want every single mark to be exactly the same. It's gonna look a little bit strange like that too. But it's better to generally keep it going a little bit left to right, maybe change the angle. So sum up like this and like that, as well as like this. And just try to keep it a little bit random. But just try to avoid too much of the circular motions. It's not really going to create a good look. So lots of taps actually is probably better than that even. So lots of light taps really will help. Maybe we'll turn the size of the foliage up just a little bit so it's the top end of 2%. Again, we can have some areas where it really clumps together, creates quite a dense area and at other bits, perhaps where it's quite sparse and there's not too much. So anywhere where there's a branch, we want to create some kind of foliage that's maybe going off to both sides of the branch because it will splinter off, it will branch off in every direction. So we can put the foliage in first and then we can go back into it and I'll show you how to do this. We'll go back to the airbrushing, back to the medium brush, have it at the 1% and we can just create some connections, some of the branches to justify the foliage being there. So I recommend a real back and forth between the two different brushes to really start to build up this effect. Not that every branch needs to have an obvious amount of foliage growing from it. You might just get the odd branch that doesn't really appear to have much coming from it at all. We'll go back to our artistic brush, the leatherwood, and we'll try some more of this foliage. Again, stick with it. Some of the really dramatic effects of this scene is going to be a little later on, so persevere through this stage and then the rest of it will make this effort worthwhile. So again, I'm keeping it, I'm just showing you here on its own, so I'm keeping it quite random, a collection of taps like this, and that builds up. It's better than doing too much of an obvious shape. You don't want it too consistent. You want it to be a little bit random like that. So I'll just get rid of that. We don't want that on its own. Might do some areas over here and then I'll create some branches in a moment. So think about the overall shape of the tree too. Do you want to create a round shape to it generally? I'm going to put some up here and then create the branches afterwards. Put the size of the brush up to maybe 3%. I wouldn't do it much beyond 3%. It's going to be a little bit too large as a texture, but it does help speed it up a little bit. Now I can also turn the opacity down a little bit to around 50%. So anywhere that's perhaps going a little bit further off behind the back part of the tree might just be a little bit fainter. Create a little bit more depth for some parts of the foliage. And if you do keep going over it, it's going to build up that opacity anyway in areas. So there's clumps like here, so we have an obvious branch that would lead to 
an area here perhaps where we can have a real concentration of the foliage. Again, another branch here. So we have a main branch that splits off into a whole area here. So maybe concentrate a little bit more in this area. Again, maybe this quite big branch leads to this area. We'll create another clump. This one still needs to have some, so we'll add some more to this. Find the right balance, you don't want to fill it in completely. Go back and add some more branches. So we'll go back to the medium brush. Put some of the branches in there that will justify having all of this foliage. So you need to create the branches for all this, for all these leaves to grow from. So if you see any areas perhaps where you just want to darken it up, you don't necessarily need to go onto the other textured brushes. You can just use this medium brush just to pad it out in areas if it feels like it needs it. Use both brushes as of when you need them, but you can mix and match the brushes for the different areas anyway. I'll come back to that. I'll refine it a little bit further later on, but we're going to move forward with the tutorial anyway to another element. So the next dramatic element is going to be the grass. So we'll create another layer for this. Go back to our colors. And we've got two colors here that are going to be both dedicated for the grass. So we've got a color here, which is really dark. And we're going to draw every blade of long grass individually. So the way that we're going to do that is we go back to our brushes, back to the inking brush, and we're using this syrup brush. So if you notice with this brush, when you press on, you get a wider part. And when you press on lightly, you get a narrow section. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check we've got the right kind of size. Let's have a look. Maybe a little bit lower on the side, so we'll put it at around 10%. We can do the narrow and we can press on harder and we'll get a decent size stroke. And we'll keep it on the 100% opacity. So you can just try it out to begin with. It's going to be the foreground element. So maybe start at the top of our brush, press on lightly. And then as we get a bit further down, we can press on a bit more. So we'll start with some basic grass elements. So you press on lightly as it comes further down, you can press on more. doesn't matter if it gets some wobbles in it here and there. It's only going to add to the effect that it's a natural element in our landscape. So we'll move around the scene, press lightly, press on a bit more, have them leaning in different directions, practice a few more until you're really confident that you've mastered the beginning being light pressure and then pressed on a bit more like that. The next thing we can push this a little bit further. So we'll go a little higher up and we'll start with a light stroke. We'll press on a little bit more, then we'll press on lightly again and then we'll press on a bit more again. We'll try another blade of grass, perhaps that changes angle. So this one will start off thin, going off at one angle, then it changes, we'll press on a little bit more, let go, bring it down, and then we'll press on a little bit more. We'll try some more blades of grass over here, perhaps. So we'll press on lightly, press on a little bit more, and then keep that going all the way down. We'll try some at a slightly sweeping angle, because we want to have them affected by the wind, they're all going to grow in different directions. Once they get so long, they might start to bend over a bit more. So we'll press lightly, press on a bit more, and then we can just start to bring it down like this. Press lightly, press on a bit more, press on less, and bring it down. Because we have a blade of grass that if you look at it from one angle, like a hand, you'll see it looks wide, and then when it goes to the side, it's going to look narrow. So the blades of grass, as they twist and turn, are going to change from thick the thin depending on how it's appearing towards the viewer. So it's important that it isn't just one type of thickness all the way along. It is going to twist and turn, therefore look thinner and thicker. Now, if you feel like it does it too dramatically in any areas, you can just go over, smooth it in so it appears a little bit better. But we're going to repeat that process quite a lot. So I'm going to do some that are really curled all the way over. So lightly press more and then bring it over and then lightly press a bit more bring it in, bring some over here, lightly press more, bring it in. And then we can generally bring quite a few into one section. So I'm going to press on more, let go, press on more, let go. And you notice I'm deliberately overlapping them. So press on more, let go, press on more, and then light as it gets toward the end. Press on more, let go, press on more at the end. 
and we're creating a real variation of textures and tones. Now we're going to have some a lot of shorter grass in this area, so we can really build this up in this short area here as well. So we can really go over this area with a selection of shorter grasses. Bring some of them up. Some of them might be really flattened down and going off to the side. We can do a whole section of them at the bottom that are filling in and blocking out the light in these areas. If you wanted to, you could just increase the size of the brush, perhaps and just fill in this bottom section. Perhaps you don't want any light coming through right at that bottom area. Then we'll reduce it back down to the 10% and we'll keep moving the grass across. So we'll start over at this end. We're going to go with a general leaning in this area. Most of them on this side are leaning over, so we need to add some more that are following the general motion from this side. So again, press on more and then lightly let go towards the end. Press on more, let go at the end. Have them crossing over. Have some of them with a, a clear bend at the end, like it folds over. So again, press, let go, and then maybe towards the end, you can just have a bit more pressure. So change up the directions. You don't want them all the same. If they're all going to be exactly the same direction, it really won't look good. So change up the direction a little bit. We can have more going in that direction than anything else, but you want a real variety of different changes of angle and size. So we can have some that are going to be really sharply over and some that might even go the other way. And you'll start to get the kind of the feel of it as you go along and you can start to build up a little bit of speed. And then once you get to a certain point, you can just really speed up, get a few more in there for the bottom. It matters a little bit less if you're just filling in the bottom area, but still try to vary it up a little bit in places if you can. Maybe one or two feature ones that really stand out, we can change the direction. So press on a little bit more as well and light and then press on more towards the bottom bit. We want to disguise the bottom of that tree area as well. So let's, let's add some more in that area. We'll try the other green now as well. So we've got another slightly lighter green just to give it a little bit more texture because if we're using nothing but the same kind of green, it's going to little, look a little bit lifeless, but we'll try this as a layer underneath. So I've created a new layer and I'll put it underneath that because if it's a little bit lighter, it's probably going to give the impression that it's somehow behind the rest. So we'll just use this just to create a little bit more subtlety. I'm doing it really quick now just to build up the, the mass and bulk up the grass area. Go back to my main layer for the grass, which was layer seven, and go back to my darker color again just build up these bottom sections. We definitely want to block out more of the light in some of these areas. So again, you can just have more grass that's probably leaning off a little bit and really filling in some of these areas. Okay, I'll come back to that grass effect. We need to start adding some of the sunlight into our scene and really bring out the drama with the use of light. So I'm going to create another layer, all of the grass and tree elements. And what I'm gonna start doing now is really deciding where the sun is gonna go, and then we can increase the drama in our scene using these bright colors. So I'm gonna go for the yellow color, and I'm gonna to go to my brushes, put it on the medium brush, we'll put it up to 7%, and we'll put it on 100% opacity. And we're just gonna make a decision now where to put the sun, and I'm gonna to choose to put it there. Now I'm gonna press it a few times, and pressing lightly to build it up, and that is where my sun is going to be. I can then go back to my colors, use this red color, increase the size to 20% and turn the opacity really, really low at to around 10%. And I'm just gonna go into the middle of that shape, press it a few times and you can start to see it's bringing some warm colors, colors in now, like that. I'm gonna create another layer, put it on top of that and we're going to increase the size of our brush to 25% and then we're going to do similar thing. We're going to increase it again to 35% and we're going to do it again and then we're going to put it up to 45%, tap it a couple of times and then we'll put it all the way up to 60% but this time lower the opacity to only 5% and we'll tap it a few times like that. Maybe a couple more just for good measure and then I'm going to go to the Gaussian blur anyway and I'm just going to 
merge it in a little bit just to soften that slightly. So I'm going to put it at around 40% to soften it in. And then we'll go back to our sun layer and we'll just put it back on top again. Select that layer, go to my adjustments, go to the bloom, affect the layer, and I can just turn that up to really make it more dramatic. I'm going to put that up to around 40% again. So I'm going to create another layer above that and I go back to my colors. I'm going to start using some of these other colors now. So I'll use that color first. We're still on the soft airbrush, but we need to turn it down to around 3% and we're still going to keep it quite low on the opacity, but maybe a little bit more at around 10%. So in this section, this area up here, we're going to have some slight wisps of cloud, maybe some slightly broken texture. It's behind the trees, so we don't need to worry about it overlapping and destroying anything above here. But we just need to create a broken sense that there is something in the sky. It's not entirely cloudless. The sunlight is really strong, so it's going to be affecting some bits of the cloud like this. And don't take this color too far up because it will appear darker than these areas, even though it's lighter here. Maybe take it a little bit across behind the tree as well. Then I'll stay in the same layer, but I'm just going to move across these these colors. So I move to the next color and we can just start to really bring out a variety of different light colors here. And it is a bit lighter, so we can take it a little bit further up. Again, just keep it as nice broken textures as we go across. And then we can also try the last color, which is quite a lot lighter, which means we can take it a bit further up as well. So with this lighter color, we can just introduce some wispy bits higher up, maybe all the way across. And again, behind the tree, it could be having more of an impact. But just in areas, let's just have a little bit more sharpness to the, the highlights, the light that's being picked up in the cloud. And then maybe we can just do a hint of one or two areas that are really getting close to the sun. I mean, it's not close to the sun because the sun is millions of miles away but in terms of proximity within the scene when it gets closer to the sun it's going to pick up more light i think if we go back to that layer and just duplicate it so we've got two versions of layer 10 we'll go for the bottom version of it we'll go back to our adjustments go to the gaussian blur affect the whole layer and i'm going to blur it in to around 50 percent then i'm going to go back to it Go on the hue, saturation and brightness, affect the whole layer. And I'm just going to play around with the, the hue of this. And I think I want to take it just a hint more in this direction so it, it brings out some slight more purple colours. But that's too far. So we started on the 50%. I want to nudge it to around 45%, like that. And it's just bringing in a greater range, a greater variety of colours. So. I'll show you with and without. So that's without and that's with. And I think it's just making it a, a bit more interesting. So if we wanted to really blend that in a little bit more, we could do that by going back to our Gaussian Blur now, affect the whole layer, and we could just extend that purple and it will push it outwards. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm gonna push it a little bit further again to around the 50% again. Really brings out some more of the drama. So I'm gonna go back to my colors, go to this yellow color, Go back up to layer 11. Again, it should be on a low size, 2% and low opacity. So I'm going to turn this even lower to 5%. But I'm just going to use this yellow just to bring out the intensity of that little section of clouds that is, like I say, seems quite close to the sun now. It's going to end up being very similar to the sun in terms of vibrancy if it's very close to it. Just hints of things perhaps here and there as well. I'm just going to go back through my layers. I'm going back to this layer, which is layer 5. I'll select it. And I'm going to create another layer above it. I go back to my colors and I'm going to go to the fourth color along on the top layer. And on the soft brush this time, I'm going to put it at around 8% and I'm going to put it quite low at 10% opacity. And I'm just going to take away from the strength of that area here because if we go back a couple of taps, you'll see it's really strong on that layer here, that distant tree line. And I just want to soften it in a little bit so make it slightly more misty, more atmospheric, and I'll probably do the same over in this area too. Just knock it back a little bit along that top edge in areas. And it is a separate layer anyway, so if you feel like it goes too far, you can always amend it. Now, looking at the tree, I feel like it doesn't quite sit right. So I'm gonna go back to the tree layer, which is layer six. 
So I've just moved this to the side slightly. We'll go back to the adjustments, the hue, saturation and brightness, affect our whole layer. And I think what I want to do is just take out some of that saturation. It feels like it's just a little bit too vibrant, a green back at the 50%. So I'm gonna reduce it down to around 40%. And I feel like it just subdues it slightly, it flattens it a little bit more, puts it in its location a little bit better. I'm gonna go back to my grass layers, that distant grass layer, which was slightly further back. I'm going to reduce the opacity of that to around 70%. And then on the top layer, I'm gonna do something similar to what I was doing at the edges here. So we're on the top layer, we'll turn the size down to 6% and we'll turn the opacity really low to 5%. But I just want to knock back some of the darkness of this grass in some areas, just a little bit along that edge, maybe a little bit along the bottom too. I love it quite impactful in the top. It works quite well when it's like that, but maybe we'll just soften it on this side too. So maybe turn the size of the brush back up to 10, just soften it in a little bit. Like that. In fact, let's go to the grass layer again. We'll change the opacity down slightly and you can see if you turn it down too far, it's just gonna make it too washed out, but we can put it to about 85%. And I think the balance is a little bit better like that. And generally, we're getting a better image. I'm gonna start reducing some more of those elements. So I'm going back to the tree layer and on 100% opacity, you can see it's really quite dramatic. So I'm just taking it back down a little bit. I'm gonna put it, I'll just move it so you can really see this, what I'm doing. So 100%, you can see the tree is really quite dark. I'm just reducing it back down to around 90%. Just knocks it back into our scene a little bit better. And again, we're gonna do this with some of the layers. They're a little bit too saturated, too dark. I think they'll work a little bit better being a little bit lighter. So I've reduced that down to, on the grass layer to around 75%. And I'm happy with that. And we'll do the same with this distant grass layer as well. We'll just reduce that down to around 50%. Sometimes it is just about playing with the layers, playing with the levels, just to find something that works a little bit better for you. So I'm just gonna to go to the top grass layer now, and I'm gonna to go to my smudge tool. And if I go to my smudge tool and tap on it, you can see it's on the smudge uh, soft brush setting. I'm gonna put it at around 4% size and about 80% opacity. And I'm just gonna go in, I'm just gonna smudge in and tap some of this green area, just to block out some of the texture. I'm, I'm trying to preserve some of the textures a little bit here and there, but also soften the bottom edge a little bit. And I'll do the same with the grass underneath it as well. A little bit more refinement in the clouds. So I'm using these colors again. I'm gonna go for the middle color there. Again, we're still on the soft brush. I'll reduce it down to 3% and reduce the opacity down to 5%. And I'll just build up one or two areas, create more of a block, a bank of this lighter colour. And then we've got two light colours there that we can do a similar effect with too. And I'll use them across the sky like that. Maybe a last little detail, I'll add a couple of birds to our scene, so we'll put that right at the very top. Let's use the color from the tree. We want it at a similar kind of distance from the tree. So I've just pressed and held to select that color. Go back to our brushes, use the medium brush. We'll put the brush quite low at around 2%, but we'll put it up to 100% opacity and we'll put it on the same layer as the tree. We'll zoom in a little bit. So we can have a variety of bird shapes. Keep it really simple. Just a suggestion of a bird is enough. You don't really need to go to too much trouble and too much detail to really get the point across. Something like that will do. So a little bit of refinement could be done on the tree just to add some more branches. We're on a medium brush, so we're on the right settings on 100% opacity and you can just start playing around with some of the branches if you wanted to refine it a little bit of time, just tidying up and go a long way. Play around with it until you're absolutely happy with the, the right level of detail is there for you. I don't zoom in in my tutorials and try to get you to the overall effect so that then you can take that overall effect and really push it as far as you want to. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. If you've had a go and you like results, make sure to share them with me on Facebook or Instagram. The links for those are down in the description. Make sure to press the bell notification button if you want to be notified of future videos like this, and I'll catch you back here soon. See you later.